Welcome to your finite math lesson at 1.3. We're going to be talking about the least squares line as the line of best fit for a scatter plot. So you're going to model data with the least squares regression line. Now you're going to need your CAS to be able to do this. And you're going to need to take really good notes on how to use the CAS to do this. Both. You know, you want to actually sit here with your CAS and work through it and you want to take really good notes. So if you don't have your CAS, pause the video and go get one now. Okay. All right, so why least squares? Why do they call the, the method that we use the least squares um, regression line? Well, the reason they do that is because whenever you draw a line through the data points, it's not going to hit all of them. There's going to be some error. And the, uh, the error we're interested in is in the vertical direction, the y direction. Okay, because we're going to use the, the model that we have to predict y values. So if you look right here, you have all these little differences or deviations right here. What they do is they square all of those and add them up, and the method we're using minimizes the sum of those squares. Okay, or if we made physical squares with area, with the, with the lengths of the errors as one side, it would be the minimum sum of all those areas. So that's why it's called the least squares line. Sometimes people get confused by what, what on earth do squares have to do with it. Well, that's what on earth it has to do with it. Okay, so if we did the work by hand, there would be a whole lot of um, numerical calculation and multiplying things together and adding them up. Luckily for us, we will be plotting data in a scatter plot to see if it is best modeled by a linear function. If that is the case, we will use the graphing calculator to get the least squares regression line to serve as our prediction equation. Okay, so the table below for our example shows the number of home runs and runs batted in for various baseball players who won the most valuable player award during the 1990s. So we've got uh, several sets of data here. So this 33 home runs is... Uh, the one value for a particular player, and then that particular player had 114 RBIs. So these two values go together. Here's an X, here's a Y. Um, the next pair are for another player. You've got 39 home runs and 116 RBIs. And here we've got the third player had 40 home runs and 130 RBIs. The fourth player had 41 home runs, 128 RBIs, and our last player had 47 home runs and 144 RBIs. So we can make a scatter plot. We're going to use the CAS to help. So what you're going to do is you need to get your TI Inspire CAS calculator. You want to click on Menu, and you want to add List and Spreadsheet. You do need to be in, uh, it will give you a document, okay? Or you can go into document and under the document choose add list and spreadsheet. Okay, there's a couple of ways to do this. So once you want to enter the data, you need to um, enter your X values in the first column and your Y values in the second column, and you have to name the two columns. You can just name them X and Y if that's what you would like to do, or you could put home runs, RBIs, it doesn't matter. X and Y are simple, so for X, just come down here and enter 33, 39, 40, 41, 47. For Y, enter 114, 116, 130, 128, 144. And then you're going to go to um, Control Doc to open a new page. And then you want to choose from the menu, option number 5, Add Data and Statistics. Okay, make sure you do data and statistics. Some people think, oh, we need to add a graph because we're going to be graphing the scatter plot. Nope. If you're going to use the data in your, uh, your uh, spreadsheet, you have to choose this one. So this is what we want to do. So once we do that, it's just got some points out there, just kind of, you know, milling about randomly. We need to click to add the two variables. So on the horizontal, you want to click and add X. And over here on the vertical, you're going to hover around here. It'll let you add a variable you want to add Y. Or if you've named them home runs and RBIs, you want to do home runs on the horizontal, RBIs on the vertical, and then you get your scatter plot. Okay, pretty cool. So now copy the scatter plot onto your paper. Make sure you label your axes, okay? You need to label X and Y or home runs and RBIs would be better. And then you need to put the number of home runs here. You need to do 32, 34. Put the scale. 
and then up and down here do the scaling for the um, RBIs. Okay, we want to find the least squares regression line and graph it on the same axes. Does it seem to be a good fit? Let's use the CAS. So what you're going to do is you go back to the first page by um, clicking control and left arrow and it will take you back to the first page and you want to choose, you want to go to menu, select statistics, you want to do a stat calculation and you want to do the linear regression line, the MX plus B line, and then you're going to get this menu here. For X list, you want to tab over here or click over here on the, the right arrow and it will have X and Y, so pick X. For a Y list, do the same thing, but pick Y. Um, you can save the regression function to whichever function you want to save it to, F1, F2, it doesn't matter. And then you're going to want to um, press OK. okay. And then it should give you your regression information in columns C and D. Over here it'll say linear regression, the equation is MX plus B. They know that you know that it means Y equals MX plus B. So the value for M here, just round it to the nearest tenth and put it in as the coefficient of X. And then plus B, so plus 37.6. So the value for your slope is right here. There's your M. The value for your B, the Y coordinate of your Y intercept is right there. So 37.6. And so this is our um, least squares regression line. It is the line that models the, the data the best. Okay, now we want to add it to our scatter plot. So you're going to go back to the scatter plot page by clicking control and right arrow and that will take you back to this page and you're going to go to analyze go to um, menu analyze and pick regression and you want it to show linear what we just found out mx plus b okay and then press enter and boom there is your regression equation your um, lsrl on your scatter plot along with the equation right here Okay, so add that to your scatter plot that you made previously. Okay, great. We want to interpret the slope. Okay, on average, for every additional home run, there will be an additional 2.22 RBIs. It's the um, average marginal increase. Okay, so for every one additional home run, you expect to get 2.2 RBI. It's not going to happen every time, but on average, that's what should happen. Now, sometimes the y-intercept doesn't make any sense, and this one we can actually kind of talk about it. Here it is. It's 37.6. The y-intercept, that would be the number of RBIs expected if somebody had zero home runs. If you have zero for your x value, what do you expect your y value to be? So that we could actually interpret. That's just extra for you. Okay. So correlation coefficient R. If you look back here, here's R squared. Beneath it is R. Okay, if we were to scroll, if you scroll down when you're looking at this page, the next thing should be R. So what is that? It's called the correlation coefficient. It gives us a measure of how strong the linear association between our two variables is. It's going to fall between negative 1 and 1. The closer the absolute value is to 1, so if it gets really close to 1 or negative 1, that means you've got a really strong linear relationship. If the absolute value is close to zero, that means you have a weak linear um, relationship. If R is positive, that means your slope is going to be a positive. It means the association between the two variables is positive. As the value of one increases, so does the other. So in this case, that makes sense. As somebody makes more and more home runs, you would expect them to make more and more RBIs. If R is negative, then the association between the variables is negative. You're going to find the slope is negative. As the value of one variable increases, the value of the other variable decreases. So R tells us the strength of the linear association and the direction of the association, whether it's positive or negative. What is R for our data and what does it tell us? Well, we get, we're going to go back, go back and look at your spreadsheet page, and you get R equals 0.916. Okay, or 9161. So, oh, it is just 9161. Okay, so R is going to be 0 0.9161. I'm fixing that. This means because it's close to 1, 
that it, the relationship is strong. The absolute value is close to 1. So even if it was negative 0 0.9161, the, the strength would be strong. Okay, so it's strong, but because R is positive, it means you have a strong, positive, linear relationship between home runs and RBIs. It's really important that you put linear in there. You want to have how strong or weak it is, whether it's positive or negative, and that it is linear. And ever, whenever you're interpreting or saying what R means, you want to include all of those things. Okay. All right, guys, that's it. If you have trouble um, putting... The data into your calculator or doing any of the, st the steps, either rewatch the video or come see me. Be happy to help you. Um, if you are in class watching this video, I strongly suggest that you go ahead on the problem to try on your own. Try to put the data into your calculator. And um, if you can't get the list set up, come see me. I'll be happy to show you. Okay, guys. Make sure you practice the, the problems to try on your own, and I will see you in class. As always, thank you so much for watching the video and taking good notes. You have a good day.